we will link together as one force, continuing to serve always. This is the Brotherhood Academy Radio Podcast. Volunteer firefighters. Friends, welcome back to another episode of the Brotherhood Academy Radio Podcast. I am Nick Hilton. I'm your host today. And the Brotherhood Academy Radio Podcast is now partnered up with Chief Miller. If you haven't checked out Chief Miller, uh, you got to go check him out. Uh, he's got a website, chiefmillerapparel.com. He's on all social media platforms. I think my favorite one to follow is uh, his Instagram platform. It's uh, chief underscore miller underscore. And he posts um, some really awesome fire-related content. So please give him a look-see and a follow. And he's also on um, all the other major social media platforms. Um The episode I want to bring to you today is a topic that a lot of you might be asking yourselves about this podcast, all right? I mention a lot about leadership and a lot of the content that's posted through the podcasting, through the social media posts and the blogs. So what is the importance of leadership when it comes to recruitment and retention of the volunteer fire service? A quote from Jocko Willink says, there are no bad teams, only bad leaders. So what does this mean? All right, if we're all struggling to retain members, to recruit members, and to keep people happy and coming to calls, is that an organizational failure or is it a failure upon the leadership? Again, there are no bad teams, only bad leaders. Without good leaders, the team will fail. It's that simple. There should be good leaders at all levels, not just the fire chief or the assistant fire chief or deputies or captains and lieutenants. These come from all levels, firefighters, junior firefighters, recruits, you name it. So what do I mean by they're at all levels? What do I mean by leadership applies to everybody? Well, you don't have to be a fire officer to lead something. Everybody should know how to take charge when needed. Everybody understands when you go through your fire, your basic fire training, your fire one and two, that anybody can be an instant commander. If you're the first firefighter on scene, you can be the instant commander until someone else shows up that could take it over for you. You do not have to be a fire officer to be a leader. Leaders organize members to clean the apparatus after a call. Leaders organize members to conduct unscheduled training. Leaders organize members to fundraise, to make money for the fire department. There are so many different things that non-fire officers can do as leaders. So we should all be leading. Leaders must take ownership. If you have read the book, Extreme Ownership by Jocko Willink and Leif Babin, you'll know this. Extreme ownership applies to everybody. And the way I see it is extreme ownership is almost the same thing as vicarious liability. Do you know what vicarious liability means? That means that up the chain of command, everybody is responsible for almost every action taken on the fire department. For a good example... If you're a fire lieutenant or a fire captain and you're riding in the officer's seat of an apparatus going to a call and your driver is driving maybe a little bit erratically, going too fast, who's responsible if an accident occurs? The driver? Yes, absolutely. That driver should take ownership. But you as an officer in that officer's seat should have extreme ownership. And then above that, your battalion chief or your deputy chief should have extreme ownership for that incident. And then above that, the fire chief, right? We should all be taking extreme ownership. That's what's going to lead your fire department into success. Leaders should also be approachable. Gone are the days where you have these Hollywood movies of leaders being aggressive and yelling and swearing and being authoritative towards their uh, towards their people. 
I know that when I meet a fire chief, I look to see if he's approachable or not. If I meet a fire service leader, I'm going to see if he is nice enough where I want to go and, and shake his hand and have a normal, everyday conversation with him and to be myself. I don't want to be around a leader that is arrogant and has a high ego and thinks that he or she is the absolute best out there. So leaders should be approachable. If you are a fire officer or a fire chief or even a senior firefighter, you better make yourself approachable. You better make yourself friendly and personable to all of the members. You're going to gain a lot more respect that way, and you're going to have a lot more higher morale in your fire department. So let's get to the point. Why is leadership so important when it comes to recruiting and retaining members? I came up with a list in no particular order. But number one on the list is good leaders make for good morale. I just said that, right? If you're personable, the morale is going to be high. If you're a good leader, you're going to be able to maintain a high level of morale and keep people happy and keep people coming back and wanting to do more and more work. Number two on my list is good leaders create good training. You do not have to be a fire officer, like I said before, to create a good training exercise. But the more training that you do, the more people are going to come back. People aren't going to want to come to your training night if you do it you know, once a week or, or once a month or whatever. They're not going to want to keep coming if, if the training is a waste of their time, if they're not learning anything and, and they're not getting any value from that. So a good leader provides valuable training and keeps people coming back. And training, in my opinion, should be done at least weekly at least weekly on your department. If you're only training once a month, you might want to step that up a little bit because the more training that you do do on a routine basis, the more engaged your members are going to be. Number three, good leaders foster new leaders. We should all be leading to create new leaders to pass on the torch for when it's time for us to step down and have the new people step in. We don't want junior leaders coming in to slowly step up the ranks and not know the direction of the fire service and not be prepared for what your department is wanting to do in the future. You don't want to just step into a job and not have any idea how to do it or what's expected, especially as a brand new lieutenant or a brand new captain where you have different roles. You want to have an idea of what is expected, correct? So as officers and leaders right now, we should be grooming our future leaders into their positions. Number four, good leaders create a positive environment. Nobody wants to come around the fire station if everybody is negative and gossiping and spreading rumors and complaining about everything. A good leader fosters positive energy. Positive energy translates into high morale, right? Back to my first point on this list. Leaders make for good morale, while well, leaders also create a positive environment. Number five on the list is leaders move in a common direction, meaning the fire department that you are on should have a common goal or a common mission for the future. And every one of those leaders should be on the same page. And if everybody's on the same page, all of those leaders will pass that mission and that goal down to the other members, and therefore everybody in that level will also be on the same page and know exactly what's to be expected and know exactly what everybody is working for and working towards. And that also creates a sense of ownership for everybody on the fire department. Everybody should have some sort of sense of ownership because let's face it, in a volunteer fire service, if you don't have a little bit of ownership, what's the point? What's the incentive besides going to the calls and having fun and, and helping people? But if you don't have that sense of ownership, what's the point? Why would we be wasting our time to get out of bed, to get out of our homes, leave our dinner, leave our families, if there's no sense of ownership and there's no, um, I guess, gratitude, which leads me <laughs> into the next point. Point number six is good leaders give gratitude and praise. It's extremely important, folks. We should be thanking our members every time they come out of their homes, every time they answer a call, or every time they come for a detail or an event or a fundraiser or a meeting or a training, we should be thanking them. Show that gratitude. As leaders, that should be one of our number one jobs to do. And the more you do it, the more other people are going to do it. And everybody's going to be wanting to come back. They're going to feel like they're valued. They're going to feel like, again, they have some sort of ownership. 
and along the lines of giving gratitude, we should be praising them as well. I've mentioned this before. If somebody does a good job, praise them. Tell them they did a good job. Praise in public, discipline in private, right? So if somebody did an outstanding job, like maybe giving a size up at an incident if they were first there, or maybe they did extremely very well on some patient care or on an extrication or maybe helping a homeowner back into their house after an incident, praise them for that. Recognize them for that. Let them know. And finally, number seven is good leaders recognize tradition and culture. I strongly feel that traditions in your current fire department, in your unique organization, are crucial to maintain. This doesn't mean that we should be looking to stifle progression and ignore uh, the mission of moving forward and advancing in technology and in training and in, in tactics. No, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is recognize the culture of your fire department and the traditions that you guys have had over the years and do not let those go. Some traditions that I'm referring to are maybe you have a certain style fire helmet that you wear and people are proud of that. Your company pride. Keep that. Don't force new equipment or new helmets down the throat of your members. Another tradition that I know we hold on to on our fire department is every year in August, we hold a fire muster. We do our annual parade and fire muster. That's a dying tradition in the volunteer fire service. And we are still doing it. This is going to be our 103rd year this year. It's critical to hold on to traditions and culture. And leaders are to step up and to make sure that that happens. And again, you do not have to be a fire officer to hold on to these traditions, to make sure that these traditions stay alive. It is everybody's responsibility. Everybody should be stepping up to be a leader. If problems happen on a fire scene and your incident commander is now tasked to do something else or has injured him or herself, Who's going to be taking over that call? Who's going to be making the decisions? There better be someone else on that fire ground that can do that. And to be able to do that with the common mission that the fire department has and with the common SOPs and the vision so everybody's on the same page and the decisions can be made, right? And it's up to all of us. So leadership is important when it comes to maintaining recruitment and retention on your fire department. Please recognize that. And you're going to hear a lot more about leadership on this podcast. And you're going to read a lot more about leadership in the blog. And you're going to see a lot more on the social media posts. Because leadership is the foundation, the foundation for the survival of your fire department. If you're losing members, if you can't get people to come out and answer calls during the day or at night, Look at the leadership. Look at how you are leading. Look at how everybody else is leading. And it's time everybody gets together and gets on the same page and starts leading. That's all I have for today. Thank you for listening. Please share this. Please give this a rating. And I appreciate you guys listening. Thank you. Friends, please join the movement by sharing this podcast and sharing our social media accounts and visiting us at brotherhoodacademyradio.com. Brotherhood Academy Radio Podcast is brought to you by Salty Hook Media.